Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. And in today's video, I am documenting a photo of myself and my husband, a quick selfie that we snapped outside the British Museum in London when we had a family day trip there last year. So I've pulled out my Vicky Booten print shop collection and I've gone through all the bits and pieces, the scraps of papers that I've used previously, both from the 6x8 paper pad and the 12x12 paper pad. And I just want to create a massive mat of layers to add the photo to the left hand side of my page. So you can see I'm working with what I've got. That spotty paper already had a tear down the side. So I've put that to the right hand side of the photo and use that as a feature. I've used one of the cut parts um, to use the clip, the bulldog clip at the top of that. So just offset the photo against that cut apart. And now I'm just going through the all, all the other bits and pieces. And as I say, just working with the sizes and shapes and slowly building up the layers. Um, I want them to be smaller on the right hand side and working up to a full 12 inch strip on the left hand side. So just pulling out and trying to use the bits as they are where possible. So like this piece just fits nicely into that bottom corner there. And um, I'm going to use a strip of this pink because obviously it's too big. Uh, a strip of this green, I'll just trim it down and cut off the bit where I've trimmed out the circle from the other side. And I'll just keep going through. And this is one of my favourite ways of creating a layer, just working through the bits that are already there. I've said it in the past. I don't know whether it's because I'm lazy <laughs> and it's easier. I'm not having to cut things off or whether it's that fear of cutting into a new piece of paper. I'm not quite sure. But it's a great way to use up all those scraps. And of course, because they're all from the same collection, I'm, I'm probably more of a collection scrapper. They all work nicely together. So I'm not too worried about the colours gelling. I know that it will work. The photo that I'm using has got fairly neutral colours in there. You've got the green of the tree behind Ross. Ross has got a blue top on, I've got a black top on, and then just the stone colour of the building. There are some um, men with high-vis jackets behind, but you'd barely notice that. So all these colours are going to work really nicely with that photo. It's a six by four photo, and then I've just matted it onto some white card just to give it definition, because there are going to be a lot of layers going on behind it so I just wanted to make it stand out against all these layers. So I'm working towards the biggest part now of this photo mat so I've pulled out this purple I didn't want to add too much of this but I'd, again just to bring something else in and I do love these tone on tone colours so you'll see I tend to be using the B side of the papers rather than the very bright colourful sides. And some of them I'm using both sides, I flip it over if there's enough to use two strips of it and I see I like both sides then I will do that. So just working out where to put that purple piece, it wasn't quite as long as I'd hoped it would be. <laughs> so just trying to work out how I can add it to give the maximum visibility and impact. And you can see, you can just see a very thin sliver of that at the bottom of that, but then the green overlaps it. And I love all these different layers. So this is going to be my last big piece, the 12 inch strip that anchors everything together to the left hand side. And I just wanted a torn edge on that um, just to provide something a little bit different. You don't see a lot of that torn edge because a lot of it's underneath the other mats. And then I see this um, branding strip and it's got the hole in the middle because it's from the paper pad. So just tucking it up, in, up under enough so that that hole is hidden and then adding that as well. So now all this can be stuck down and then I can start working on the rest of the layout. I know I want to create a feature in the bottom right hand corner just to balance this out. The photo is quite high up. So first of all, I just want to ruffle up all the edges. I didn't distress with my distressing tool because I didn't want that much of a distressed look. But I do just want to rough them up with my nails just to curl the edges slightly. These papers from the um, paper pad in print shop are quite thin as well. So sometimes if you go in heavy handed with the edge distressor, it's quite easy to tear them. So I found just using my nails will sometimes give me the desired look. So just deciding what else I can put along. I decide that I want a bit of a shelf at the bottom of the picture just to draw the eye across. And because I know I'm having that strip in the bottom right hand corner, I wanted to add a little bit more going across the page. So again, working with the torn edge that I've got on this scrap of paper, just adding that underneath the photo. And then I'll find another piece just to balance it out. Checking with my T-square ruler that everything's straight because <laughs> there's a lot going on here already. And then this is the strip that I'm going to use just to balance it out and draw that line out just a little bit more. 
So that's that. And then I spot this navy blue piece and I decide that I just want to add a little bit more of that, of that to the top. There's not a lot of navy blue at the top there, so just adding another little layer. <laughs> it never stops, does it? But I do like the balance that provides because there's quite a lot of navy at the bottom with that floral paper and having added the floral paper to the horizontal line as well, that just balances everything a bit more for me. So just making sure that everything's stuck down using my sticks to tape runner. That's great for this sort of a layout, just for speed. And again, just roughing up those edges. So now looking to see what else I've got and I spot this journaling card and it says happening today. So I think that's perfect as the foundation for my cluster in the bottom right hand corner. I just trim off the bottom because it's a bit too long for me. I didn't want anything that high and especially with that piece coming out, the blue floral piece of paper coming out from the photo. I didn't want to build this up too much. So I'm just going to mimic the layers that I've got on the left hand side on the right. I do like to mirror things where possible. So just bring in a bit of this script paper and then I shall bring in some of that purple dot paper as well. So just grabbing some scraps that I've got lying around and I build up a little cluster here. I decide to move that green piece down to the left hand side. Just sticking things down. And this is where I decide that that green piece would be better out the left hand side. So just adding that. Again, roughing up the edges with my fingernails. And here comes the purple piece. And at first, I think I'm going to add it right the way up the right hand side. I didn't want to, but as soon as I put it there, I thought, oh, that looks nice. <laughs> so I was going to add it right up the right hand side there. But then once I stick it down, I decide that it is a little bit too long. So I, um, I tear off the top and bring it down to the bottom edge. So just sticking that down. And I think it's once this bit's down, I realise that that's a bit ridiculous. I don't like it that tall. Just checking that everything's straight again. So here we go. As soon as I stepped back and had a look, I thought, no, I'd prefer to have it along the bottom here. And to my eye, that's much better. So again, just roughing up those edges so that everything matches. And then coming in with some of the stickers. And I find this one that says a bright idea. And it was a bright idea pre-booking the British Museum because we were able to just walk in. And there were some queues already at that time at about 10 o'clock in the morning. And then that flag says time well spent. Um, we had a couple of hours there and it was really great fun. The kids enjoyed it. So I found this tag. Um, again, it's from one of the cut parts. I think it's from the 6x8 paper pad. So just cutting off the florals. I didn't really want the florals there. And just have it building up those layers again. And with the hole at the bottom, it means that I can add some thread to add more interest to the page. This is one of the chipboard pieces. So again, just peeling off the excess layers. The chipboard's too thick for me, so I just tend to peel off some of the excess layers. And that works as a nice mat to add that sticker to. Now I'm going to bring in one of James's circle webs that we sell under the JD3D print brand. I love those um, and I just think that really adds something. It's white on white but the burnt edges of the laser cut give enough definition to shine through. So just gluing that down in a couple of places. It doesn't need loads of glue. Just getting it stuck down and then I can get the frame stuck down on top of it. So I'm going to add a foam pad to the sticker that's overhanging that, that frame just so that it's all on the same level. And then that can be stuck down, just tucked underneath with the sticker going over the photo. So now that's done, I'm going to add my journaling and my journaling just reads, we pre-booked our slot in the British Museum, a quick walk from Euston train in time for a selfie. So these circles are from the spectacles that were on the 6x12 sticker sheet and fortuitously I kept hold of them and I think they just work really nicely as embellishments around the page. So adding one to each of those areas and then I'm going to add my thread to the tag 
and loop it through the bottom circle to hold it in place. So I've also got a white tassel and um, a camera charm on a bulb pin. So I'm just going to add those to that tag just for interest. So I threaded the loop through the tag and then added the tassel on and then added the, um, I'll add the camera afterwards. So here I am just deciding what to do with this twine. So first of all, let's staple it in place with my tiny attacher. And then you'll see in a minute, I do loop it up through that circle. So here I am adding that lovely camera charm. It's just a copper camera charm that I had in my stash. And then here I am looping that thread through and I just leave it hanging freely. I do faff a lot though. <laughs> there we go. See, as I say, I do mess about an awful lot with the, the ends, trying to decide where they'll go. <laughs> So just adding a dab of glue underneath that circle to keep it in place. And then I decided to bring in some of this gorgeous pom-pom trim that we sell at Hey Little Magpie. I think the yellow really brings out the yellow in that sticker that says a bright idea. So just adding a bead of glue underneath the um, paper that it's going to tuck under. And then this just tucks under and it stays in place perfectly. This flare badge is from Hey Little Magpie and it just says live life. And I think that will work really nicely in the bottom left hand corner of the photo there. So just adding some yellow tangled thread underneath and a big dob of glue just to keep that in place. And then I want to add a few more bits around there. So I bring in one of our um, dots. These are the, gosh, I can't think of the word. It will come back to me. <laughs> and then um, one of the JD 3D print hearts, wood hearts, which I think works really nicely. It's a resin dot, that's the word. <laughs> and there's some more JD 3D print wood. Um, these are the mini chevrons, which I adore, and I'm using five today, not the usual three. So getting a bit bold with those. And then one of the arrows from the Tiny Arrows pack. So this is a little paper clip that I found. Um, so I'm adding that to the top with a little sticker. I think we are going to be selling these clips in Hey Little Magpie, they're gorgeous. I know Julie Taylor uses them a lot as well. So finally, I'm going to come in with some splatters. So I'm using the uh, Shimmers paint and just watering it down and one of our new number four brushes. This is great for small splatters all around the page. And I'm just adding a couple there to the top where I wanted bigger pieces and then concentrating around the clusters. So finally, the date stamp at the bottom of the photo next to those wooden arrows. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Please do give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe if you haven't already. And I shall see you again very soon. Bye.